Imagine a cosmopolitan city in the 7th century AD in central China, filled with people from many different cultures, from J Japan and Korea to Persia, Tibet, India, coming to sell all sorts of goods. A gigantic city, almost the size of San Francisco, this walled city became the capital of 10 dynasties in China, including Sui and Tang dynasties, as it lied at, at the end of the famous Silk Road. This is Chang'an, now modern-day Xi'an in Shanxi province. Chang'an helped represent the golden age of the Tang Dynasty in Chinese history, when all sorts of Chinese culture began to flourish. Chang'an was China's first model and planned city, built under the ideas of Taoism and Confucianism, and filled with one million people during the Tang Dynasty. In this segment of Anxia's architecture, I will be talking about the city of Chang'an, what made it a successful city, and what did the city lack? How can urban planners today learn from Chang'an for future use? First, we need to ask the question, how was Chang'an built? We first need to go back to the Shang and Zhou dynasties. The Shang Dynasty came up with the idea of a unified city under one government and one religion. The Zhou Dynasty came up with the idea of the Mandate of Heaven. Let's go back 3,600 years into the Shang Dynasty, about 1600 BC. China was primarily an agricultural state. However, bronze technology, a writing system, ceremonial religious places, public world, roads, distinguishing public architecture, a taxing system, and a system of farmers ruled by landlords, or aka a feudal system, were already in place. Warfare was common, since many Shang cities were city-states. However, the Shang government, seeing a growing society, needed a way to have social order and political control over its people to provide stability. Therefore, Shang cities were, were built to provide the needs of the government and its administrative functions. In order to understand this idea of control and unity, let's look at this Chinese character Yi and its original Shang ideograph. Yi is the ancient form of the word city, which is now called Shi. The Shang ideograph shows a man kneeling under a box, which is supposed to be an enclosure. The enclosure represents a wa the wall of a city, the power of the capital as the center of the whole nature nation. The man kneeling represents his submission towards the government and its moral and its religious authority. As you can see here, early Chinese urban planning went under the concept of unity of, of a whole nation. The Zhou Dynasty came up with the idea of the Mandate of Heaven. The Mandate of Heaven is the idea that emperors were given the divine right by God to rule the kingdom. In order to reflect this idea, the capital city had to be aligned very orderly. For example, the Supreme God was in charge of distributing qi or heavenly air. The Supreme God lived in heaven, and the North Pole Star was supposedly where heaven was located. This qi was needed to be given to the kings of China and their, and their dominion. The qi was released from the star into the earth. Do you know how the earth has all those meridians, those lines you see surrounded around the globes that you see? The Chinese believe qi followed exactly those lines. What does this mean in pictures? The emperor would be in the northern part of the city to first receive the qi Chinese cities will, should be aligned on the mer meridians with the qi would travel through the, the meridians with the walls and gates aligned as such the south would be where most humans enter and where the qi will leave for the rest of the nation this concludes this video segment of early Chinese urban planning a concept filled with unity control and religion for more information, please continue to see my YouTube videos or check out my blog or subscribe to my YouTube channel.